Hello everyone, my name is Emma. I'm a community coordinator here at Hack the Box. And today I'm going to be talking about container escapes. So containers have made a super big presence in our life lately. Everyone's using them. They're the hot stuff. Let's see how we can break them. So let's start, what is actually a container? Containers are primarily based off of run C, which is the main runtime for them, which is what's used by Docker, Podman, and all the big things that you are aware of. These are underpinned by two important kernel features called namespaces and C groups. Namespaces are what provide all of the process isolation and the security features, while C groups allow the resource limiting and other stuff that you would need. So with these, we have a, what's needed to make a container. And Docker came along in early 2013 and wrapped that into a really nice API. Although it was started out as an internal project well, that went public, it went open source in March of 2013. So it's been around a lot longer than people think. But the Docker really just takes everything that is already in the kernel and implements it into a really nice, easy to use way that we know of today. Then in 2014, that's when Kubernetes released, which is what really makes Docker great for a production environment as that manages it, orchestrates it, and scales it so it's really scalable. Then in 2015, with all this crazy container technology, OCI came in, which is an open container initiative, and started setting up specs and compliance so everyone is on the same page. Then in 2016, Windows supports that. I don't know who runs containers in Windows, there if you need it. So isolation. It uses namespaces. However, the kernel is still shared, which is not as secure as the VM. So there is that bridge rather than just over the network that you have in a VM. So you do have to be much more careful about having your systems patched and maintaining the right permissions. And then the other big thing is flags and feed feature flags and permissions. In a VM, it's generally there's no communication between the two processes except maybe over the network. Within a container, you can mount paths from the host, you can bind to ports in the host, it's still the same system. So that's an entirely different attack surface. You can't just treat it like you can run any code in it and it's secure steps you have to take in order to do that. So let's talk about them. Privilege. This is what everyone uses in Dell when you want to quickly test out something, but the default permissions aren't good enough. This has way too many permissions. This gives you access to slash dev inside the uh, container, which means you can just mount the host system, see a true drip message, it SSH keys in, which is a huge vulnerability that we don't want. There's also a feature in C groups called notify on release, which executes commands from the kernel if enabled, which is a big risk. There's also bind mouse, which as previously mentioned, map a path from the host to the container that are dangerous if you're not done right. You should really only be read only because if you can write, you can compromise. For example, if you mount the Docker sock in, you can just run a Docker command, mount your root as slash mount, and then ch root into that, which compromises your entire system. You can also have sub vulnerabilities like in Kubernetes, if you have a host path mount, which is the same thing as a line mount, of slash var slash log, you can compromise the entire node. There's some good write-ups on that online. So you really want to be careful about what you expose to your containers as anything besides just running it is bad. And then kernel exploitations. With stuff like Dirty Cow, any like local private escalation you can think of, those most likely will let you escape the container as you're escalating your privileges. So you have to be really careful about keeping it up to date and keeping everything in a well running order on both the container and stuff that's running on there, as well as the host OS. But how can you mitigate these issues? The main ways is principle of least privilege. You want to give each thing as little as possible, 
and do as little as possible with it. If you want to mount it on a port, don't use privilege, use NetBind service. Don't let containers get compromised in the first place, and make sure that if one container gets compromised, every container doesn't have right access to everything else, so that way you can minimize the surface of attack. And don't mount in sockets or any other sensitive files that could allow for code execution on your host system. When you, you're also able to remap the UID and GID of the container root user to another user on your host system. This allows, so if the, in the event of code execution, then the attack surface is minimized as they're not running as root. Um, you can find some stuff on this in the Docker documentation. You can also implement a API firewall, which is a really good idea to do as when you add a user to the Docker group and the standard Docker installs, you have blanket access to everything, which is really not what you want for someone. If assisted dev wanting to run it, you don't want them to be able to have full root access and access other people's systems. It's not a good idea. So that way you can implement, so, oh, only this person can mount volumes, run privileged, et cetera, et cetera. So that way it's not uh, GTF open or anything like that. There's also some new technologies that run a single container inside of a VM. So you get the best of both worlds with the really documented, composed, like Docker compose files. So you could have that infrastructure as code and it's really easy replicatable, but you also get the benefits of using a VM but you do lose some performance overhead with that. The impact, though, of a breach can be pretty large. It really depends on the situation. You can have an internal network compromise and pivot within it. It's Kubernetes, etcd, all your secrets, and other stuff. So you really have to be careful and watch out for in your infrastructure. Now I'll do a quick demo of what some of these attacks all right so you just type in docker run slash bar run dot docker dot sock and then mount that to slash bar run docker dot sock whoops i forgot to see dash v flag and then we want to run this on a ubuntu image with slash bin slash bash Oops, I did that backwards. IT Ubuntu slash bin slash bash. Okay, now we have this. Then we need to install Docker. Okay, and now we can just run it docker run dash it or so dash v to mount it. If we run the root file system as slash mount, then we do slash it alpine slash run slash bash. Oh, whoops. There is no bash unless we need to see it from slash mount which will give us access to the host system where we can cat slash root slash h1 slash flag, which was not in the container. So we have successfully escalated to the host. And for another demo, this will be using Kubernetes. We have a quick YAML file to deploy a pod. This is just a basic Ubuntu image that has a security context of privilege. So that with this, we are just going to run kube cuddle, however you want to pronounce that, priv apply, oops, uh, to to apply, and then we will get a new pod. And then we do kube cuddle, 
exec room s Primix pod it batch. So we get a shell here. Now we can just run fdisk dash l, and then we can see all of our host disks. So because we have full access to slash dev of the host, which then we can just do mount or of since this is running LVM, I know it as it's the host system, we can install LVM2. With LVM2 installed, we can do LVM disk scan, and we can see all of the LVM devices, with this being the root volume on the host. And then we can just mount slash dev slash sd3, and then ch root into slash mount. And then now we have full access to our root system, and we can go into slash root, slash dot ssh, and we can get all of our keys if there was any in here, or dump, say, etcd. Thank you for watching this talk. If you want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me at emma at .eu, or sales team at sales at .eu. You're also welcome to join our Discord at discord.gg slash hackthebox. We have tons of active community members there who are always help them learn, and we hope you enjoyed this talk. Thank you for watching.